Ladies and gentlemen, good morning from sunny, ha sunny Hamburg. This is Willem Werner speaking and today it's my pleasure to present you our results for the first three months of the financial year 2018. I'm here together with my colleague Olaf Borkers and Patrick Kiss, our head of IR. As introduction, I would like to start with the operation, that is the retail turnover of our tenants and the split up by retail segment, which you'll find on slide two. Starting with the overall picture, we have seen a plus of 0.9% for the absolute retail turnover of the portfolio with an again strong increase of our foreign centers of a plus 3.6% and a slight plus of 0.2% in Germany. On a like-for-like -like basis, our retailers saw in Q1 a plus of 3% abroad and a minus of 0.5% in Germany. That's a total plus of 0.2% for our portfolio on a like-for-like -like basis. There has been a visible spread between the performance of the various segments. In our German centers, on a like-for-like -like basis, department stores, plus 2.2, food, plus 2.7, sport, plus 2, health and beauty, plus 1.6, general retail, plus 2.5, as well as catering with uh, plus 2.1, performed comparably well, while services stood out positively with plus 4%. On the other hand, fashion textiles saw a rather weak first quarter with minus 0% uh, um, for the textiles and shoes and leather saw a disappointing minus 9.5%. Having in mind the unfortunate weather conditions with cold temperatures even well below 0% for long periods of time and snow elsewhere in Germany even until mid and end of March, such numbers do not surprise as it was difficult selling the spring collection which was already displayed in the stores. We'll have to see whether the summer-like weather conditions in May can make up for the poor result in Q1 of those, uh, in those two segments, which account for 50% of our space and 37.5% uh, of our retailer sales. To complete the picture for the segments, electronics, in comparison to a very strong first quarter 2017, with a growth of 4.7% back then, so now a decrease of minus 2.7%. Finally, our rent-to-sales ratio stands at 9.2% after 9.1% year in 2017. And the good news was that customer frequencies in the first three months were positive. We saw a plus of 0.9% for Germany and also a plus of 1.1% for our international centers. Let's get to the financials and start on page two with the P&L. Our results after the first quarter of 2018 look as expected. Revenues increased by 10.5% year on year, with a major effect coming from the acquisition of Olympia and Bruno, which has been included in the consolidated figures since end of March 2017, and Olympia contributed 5.1 million in this first quarter. Property operating and management costs were 1.1 million higher, than in the first three months of 2017, mainly due to slightly higher maintenance costs and non-distributable ancillary costs, as well as write-downs in the first quarter. Just a hint here, write-downs were very low in 2017 overall. The operating and management costs now stand at 5.9 million and were in line with our budget and NOI increased by 9%. Other operating expenses were half a million lower than, in, uh, than the previous year's level. The decrease resulted from lower due diligence costs in respect of acquisitions. In Q117, we had higher consultancy costs in connection with the acquisition of Olympia. As a result, EBIT increased to 49 million, which corresponds to a plus of 11%. Net finance costs were half a million higher and now amount, amount to minus 9.6 million. The major effects here will be explained in a few moments when we come to the bridges. So all in all, EBT, excluding measurement gains and losses, rose by 12% to now 39.5 million, again in particular due to the addition of Bruno. The measurement gains and losses consist of the investment costs of now 1.2 million. This number is half a million higher than in the first months of 2017, and such investment costs vary over time depending on the realization status of ongoing refurbishments, constructions, or alterations. However, the investment costs are fully in line with our planning for this year. With cash taxes of 1.7 million, which are 0.6 million higher compared to the first three months of 2017, 
and another three point, sorry, 6.3 million deferred tax to be compared with 5.9 million the first quarter 2017. Consolidated profit increased by 10% to now 30.4 million euro. For our key figures, which you will find on the next page, that means the following. FFO per share declined slightly by 1 cent to 61 cent in the first three months after 62 months before, and this is because of the higher number of shares. While the additional shares issued in conjunction with the acquisition of Olympia were FFO accretive, unfortunately the dilution effect of the conversion of the convertible bond compensated that effect. For the same reason, our Earnings per share came down by 1 cent to now 49 cent, and April earnings per share uh, remained at 60 cent uh, compared to prior year level. You'll find the detailed calculation of the FFO and EPS on the following two pages. Let's get to our balance sheet on page 6, uh, which looks strong and conservative as you know it. Our asset base rose by 31.9 million to now 4.7 billion compared to the last reporting year, uh, date end of the year, end of last year. And this is primarily due to the increase in cash and cash equivalent in an amount of 33.3 million euro. As at March, uh, end of March 2018, financial liability stood at 1.5 billion, which was 3.2 million lower than at the end of 2017. Non-current deferred tax increased by 6.5 million to now 446.3 million due to higher regular tax depreciation on the assets. The redemption entitlements of third-party shareholders uh, increased by 1.3 million to now 338.7 million euro. And other current and non-current liabilities and provisions were reduced by 4.3 million. The major effect here is coming from the appreciation of the negative interest swap values um, as interest rates have increased slightly uh, in Q1. The total equity, including minorities, increased by 33 million or approximately 1%. And our equity ratio is now strong at 56% and the consolidated LTV is at 31.5%. On a look-through basis, that is the LTV calculated fully proportionally according to the group share in all assets independent whether they are consolidated or held at equity. Um, this is a probably more fair view is the LTV now stands at 33.6%, also a very reasonable number. Uh, on the next page, we give you some more information on our debt. Um, of our consolidated debt, some 300, sorry, 630 million become due in the next five years. We still see potential for some reductions of our interest cost over the next years. Currently, our consolidated debt bears an average interest rate of 2.76%, and such rate came already down significantly in the last years. Given the current interest rate level and quotations from banks, we can refinance our debt around 1.75% without any forward cost component in Germany, and in CEE around 25 to 50 basis points above that. And our weighted maturity of our debt now also went up and it stands at a little above six years, at 6.1 years to be exact. On page eight, you'll find a more detailed maturity profile and the corresponding interest rates of the corresponding debt. And as further information on the right, you'll find some contractually agreed prolongation and interest rate fixings that we have done in the past already, and those numbers include forward costs. Uh, here's an example in the first line, an amount of 72 million for Dresden, which we closed at 1.6% for 10 years. Again, this cost uh, or interest costs are already including the forward agreement cost. For Dresden, this effect will only become visible in Q4 this year. Furthermore, in the table at the bottom of the slide, you see that also the non-consolidated loan offers from the today's point of view some room for lower interest expenses, but not before 2020. We now come to the bridges, starting on page 9. For the first three months of 2018, revenues came out at 56 million after 50.7 million in the quarter the year before. Olympia contributed 5.1 million to that increase, 
um, the base rents of the standing assets were stable overall, and we saw slightly higher penalty payments in the first quarter of this year. That is 0 0.2 million. Let's come to the financial result on page 10, starting from the left. In absolute terms, the financial result divided, uh, div uh, deviated by half a million from the previous year's numbers. And following the steps in this bridge from the left, you can see that the interest cost for the standing assets uh, now amount to 12.2 million, which is 0 0.6 million lower than in Q117. And this is due to the loan repayments and, of course, the conversion of the convertible bond. Next, you can see the additional interest rate for uh, interest costs for Olympia, which amount to 1.1 million. Um, the operating result from the ad equities was rather unchanged, and the P&L relevant swaps contributed minus uh, uh, 0.2 million to the change, and the minority profit share increased by the same amount. So overall, the financial result was at minus 9.6 million. Let's now proceed to the EBT bridge on page 11. EBT moved up in total by 3.7 million and now amounts to 38.2 million. The major change here comes again from Olympia, which contributed 4 million. The standing assets another 0.4 million. However, the valuation accounted for minus half a million and the non-efficient interest rate swaps contributed another minus 0.2 million. Very similar, on the next page, you find the profit bridge. Um, here again, the biggest effect coming from Olympia, and the individual changes can be explained as follows. Olympia contributed plus 3.5. The profit of operations of the standing assets improved by 0.7 million, whereas the valuation after tax contributed minus 0.4 in comparison to Q1 last year. Here, the non-efficient interest drops contributed uh, minus 0.2 million and other deferred tax minus 0.7 million. All these effects resulting in a total profit of, of 30.4 million. These were the bridges for the first three months of 2018. So that brings us to our guidance, which is presented on slide 13. We anticipated, as just recently announced, revenues of 220 to 224 million for this year, and next year revenues should increase to 222 to 226 million. EBIT should come in between 193 to 197 million this year, and 194 to 198 next year. We expect earnings before taxes and valuation to be within 154 to 157 for this year and between 158 and 161 next year. FFO per share are expected to end between €2.35 and €2.39 per share for 2018 and €2.40 to €2.44 for 2019. For the total FFO, we forecast 145 to 148 for this year 148 to 151 for next year. So far to the numbers and to the first quarter. Let's come to a short outlook on the next page. And looking to the operations where we are currently rolling out our mall beautification and at your service program. And we have started in five centers that is in Dresden, Bilstedt here in Hamburg, Magdeburg, Rhein Neckar Zentrum, and again in Hamburg, Norderstedt. And for some of these centers, we expect to finalize those improvements already in the fourth quarter of this year. For others, it will last into 2019. Some visualizations of the approved design studies to be implemented are already included in our annual report 2017, which is available. Uh, this is just a hint for those of you who are interested to see what we are doing here in practice. Looking on our debt, uh, on the financing side, we are working on refinancings in a total amount of 135 million, and I expected to sign this in the course and until the end of this year. And uh, looking on our dividend, we are, of course are really looking forward to pay a dividend of 1 euro 45 after the AGM this year, uh, and we plan to increase our dividend for this year to be paid next year to 1 euro 50 and the dividend for 2019 to 
1 euro 55. So far to the outlook. Thanks for listening and we are now happy to take your questions. Please, operator, go ahead. The first question comes from the line of Michel Varaldo of Société Générale. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning. Thanks for the presentation. I have three questions. The first one is the like-for-like like rents, which is plus 0.4 percent. Is it possible to to have a split between Germany and the other countries, please? Um, my second question is about uh, the, the cash tax expenses. They are increasing a lot by more than 60% in the first quarter. Is it possible to have more color for this year and the, the next year, if possible? And um, the last question is about the dividend, the payout increase, of course, with de decreasing FFO per, per share. Uh, what is the maximum level for you in terms of payout ratio if you compare dividend and the FFO, please? Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, I'll start with the first one, like for like growth. Um, it's probably a bit boring, but on average, on the standing assets and leaving aside the, the penalty payments, which are more fluctuating up and down, we saw uh, a slight decrease in Germany, uh, some 200,000 euro, and a slight increase internationally of 200,000 euro. So that nets to roughly plus minus zero. But in percentage points, this is very, very marginal. Yeah, so. Germany almost absolutely stable and a slight increase internationally. Um, the cash tax of 0.6 million, uh, the major effect here comes from um, Bruno also. Uh, this is not a tax transparent entity and we pay some uh, check te uh, cash tax. Uh, so out of the 0.6 million, um, 0.5 million approximately comes from uh, Olympia. So this can be explained uh, here. And the dividend, yeah, we don't have a maximum level, but we are now a little above 60% payout ratio and want to stay between 60 and 70% as a guidance. Um, and we, we, of course, have seen now the dilutive effects of the, the convertible bond. So the FFO per share came down, um, but it should be um, yeah, developing rather well and stable. Um, we, we don't have a guidance going beyond 2019, but in the level between 60 and 70% for payout ratio, we feel very comfortable. We we'll always judge that when we look at capex and other costs and opportunities that so we have to, uh, or what we can make or have to make. I hope that answers the questions. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Georg Kanders of Bankhaus Lampe. Please go ahead. Yeah, when I look at the FFO of Q1 multiplied by 4, then I arrive at the total FFO exceeding your guidance. Um, what are you expecting it to, to, to become worth in the course of the year uh, that you stick to your guidance? Yeah, if you see, as I just mentioned, the um, there were uh, rather, I wouldn't call it unusual, but a, a higher amount of um, penalties in the first quarter and you can't just take them, multiply them by four. So if you subtract them, go to last year's level uh, and, and still we have a year to come. Yeah, We had the in index jump in the rents beginning of the year and we have to do some releasing as we, we have said before in Germany, it's, it's a little bit tough. Uh, then you could end up um, more at the higher end of the range of the FFO but you're not automatically exceeding that. Um, so uh, it, it's not that easy just to take it times four. But it's, it's not, a, not a bad news what we have here. Yeah, we, we saw stable rents. Um, last year we had slightly decreasing rents uh, in, 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 uh, for the standing assets. Um, we, we see if the interest rates stay low and the, the next effects uh, coming in here. Um, yeah, we, we, we are, let's say we, we are uh, confirming our guidance and we have to reconsider if the year goes on next quarter and, and then third quarter. Uh, and c uh, can you... Um uh, mention the amount of the penalty payments in Q1? Yeah, that was uh, f roughly 400,000. And last year we had uh, 700,000 overall for the full year. And they are very difficult to plan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Kai Klose of Berenberg. Please go ahead. 
Yes, good morning, Jordan. Um, could you indicate a bit more on the letting activities, um, how much lease contracts were extended at the previous rental levels or at lower rental levels, and also about the lease length, um, what is the current preference of the tenants to keep 10-year leases or the preference to have a bit of shorter leases? And the same question uh, maybe on, on H&M, um, have they given already some indications how many shops, if and how, uh, how many shops they are potentially going to close in your shop, shop uh, your shop's um, portfolio. Thank you. Yeah, I start with the last one with H and M. Um, no, there is no indication or signal or list or whatever. Um, we have, of course, quite of those sh those shops. Um, to be honest, we expect to extend most of them, um, but they haven't addressed to us that they want to close or even earlier close uh, before maturity. Um, but of course, it's very, let's say. Um, yeah, lengthy, uh, let's say, negotiations with them. And, and this makes maybe is a little bit a hint to, um, not a hint, but leads to your first question where you said, I mean, there, there's no average rule that you can say that's the percentage of uh, lease contracts that have been above, at, or below market rent because it all depends on who are the tenants, which is a segment, and which, at what point of, in time the center, which is under releasing, has been leased out. Yeah, was it more in a boom time or in a down time? Um, so I think the, I mean, we, we see some effects with, with bigger tenants, um, or tenants that had some problems, like last year in Lefers, where we had to give in a little bit. Um, but there are others where we can increase the rents uh, nicely, even above uh, inflation. So on average, uh, as I mentioned before, when the first question came, it's just a little bit uh, on uh, below the base rent we had before um, in Germany, and it's it's well above uh, abroad. If you ask the question in a different way, if we talk about your fashion tenants, which is the largest sector in your portfolio, how is the trend there regarding lease length and rent levels? Yeah, and sorry, uh, the, the lease length, I, I of course, uh, uh, forgot to answer. Yeah, I mean, this is where the pressure is uh, the highest, of course. Yeah, and, and uh, there's, I mean, when you, on average, are more or less the same, um, uh, and you, you can increase rents here, uh, this is a sector uh, especially textile, not that much uh, shoes, for example, but textile where, where the pressure is most, and there the pressure is probably the highest, um, of course, with, with the bigger tenants. Yeah. And these lengths is, I mean, there's a trend that, uh, I mean, we tri we, with the big anchors, um, of course, uh, that the, the standard 10 years um, that they want to talk about special cancellation rights and that terms get uh, shorter. Um, there's not only risk management reasons behind, but also um, often shops need to be re refurbished in shorter periods as the mood and, and uh, yeah, for marketing effects, um, they want to probably have um, the shops refurbished every five or seven years. So there's a trend that, that's getting, getting shorter. Uh, what do you read in the press? The, the Zara statements, only three years, and maybe also H&M. Um, that's not what we're signing, um, but that's, of course, that's what they're asking elsewhere. Um, but the standard 10 years with those tenants is, of course, um, not the, let's say, the easiest way to get at the moment. Thank you. As a reminder, to ask a question, please press star, then 1. The next question comes from the line of Thomas Effler of Odo. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, sirs. I just have a question regarding your renovation program. I mean, you mentioned the five centers um, for the approv approval uh, end of this year, you expect. Can you remind us what is the capex volume for these uh, five uh, centers? And uh, are, are this all spent in 2019? Thank you. Yeah, the first volume will be for this, for only more beautification at your service, uh, roughly 15 to 18 million. Um, depending, we have not finally decided on each individual um, um, measurement, and this is a, uh, the amount which accounts for our center. Yeah, and uh, but many of those, uh, a lot of portion, portion of that is probably only cash flow relevant only in 2019, which runs then little into next year. I mean, we, we have, of course, a program. We try to speed it up, yeah, to have, of course, those effects once we decided to be uh, as quick as possible. Uh, so it's front-loaded, but we have to see how fast we get now workers and construction companies um, or handcraftmen on site. Um, because, I mean, you, you probably all know, have heard about that's a very 
uh, high demand for such services in the market. So we cannot really see how quickly we really can get it on the ground. Okay, thank you. And there are no further questions at this time. Okay, so if there are no, no more questions, I think we saw a good first quarter. Thank you for participating and joining and your questions, and I wish you a fruitful and constructive day from Hamburg.